are the top five most powerful level one builds in D&D. One, the pole dancing barbarian. The only thing better than a barbarian is a barbarian with a big stick. Our race is gonna be very human, getting us that tasty free feat at level one. You're gonna be hearing that a lot in this video. This gives us pole on master, meaning whenever we hit an enemy with any one of these reach weapons, we get to spin it around and boop them on the snoot for an extra 1d4 damage as a bonus action. The real combo here though is that barbarians from level one can rage, giving every melee weapon attack made with strength a plus two to damage. We're barely out of diapers at level one, but we're hitting for 1d10 plus three from strength plus two from rage plus another 1d4 plus 3 from strength plus 2 from rage every turn. This gives us 18 average damage. Oh, and by the way, you're a barbarian and you're raging, meaning you're halving all incoming damage from bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing sources, which is like 99% of damage you face at this level. Then of course, thanks to our pole arm's reach, we can attack enemies from 10 feet away, meaning you can attack, move back, and not provoke an opportunity attack because you're outside of their range. Then if they run towards you, you get a reaction attack to boop them on the nose again for another 1d10 plus 3 plus 2. And of course, you get that thick barbarian hit die of a d12. Not only is this build terrifying at level 1, it's the start of a fantastic build that'll carry you all through the game. 2. The Night Night Knight. The Night Night Knight is a powerful build that abuses arguably the most powerful early game spell and also cheats on spell slots right at the beginning of the game. You are a first level custom lineage Hexblade Warlock. You're gonna put 15 into your charisma when you buy your stats, you're gonna get a plus two to charisma from custom lineage, and then you're gonna get the free feat Fate Touched. This gets you an 18 in your primary stats at level one, which is crazy. But more than that, it gets you Misty Step, a second level spell that you can cast once a day for free. You're a level one warlock who can cast one of the best second level spells in the game two levels early. That's pretty good, but it gets better. Because you're a Hexblade Warlock, you can attack using your Charisma modifier. This means you're adding a plus four modifier to all your damage and attack rolls, all while having incredible Charisma for all that intimidation, deception, persuasion, and other social skills. But the really broken thing here is the second part of Fate Touched, letting you pick up a free first level spell from the Enchantment School of Magic. Introducing Sleep, or as it's better known, the spell that beats everything at level one. Sleep lets you roll 5d8, and the number you roll equals the number of hit points worth of creatures this spell can affect, sending them to sleep without a saving throw. Example, you cast sleep while fighting four kobolds with five hit points each, and you roll a 21 on your dice. This puts them all to sleep instantly, because each of them has five hit points, and that adds up to 20, and you roll a 21. One spell, flawless victory. It's also got 90 foot range and hits in a 20 foot sphere, which makes it a pretty hilarious way to take out flying enemies. Say you're fighting a hippogriff, you can just hit it with sleep and it'll fall right out of the air, allowing everyone to dogpile it and taking a ton of damage from the fall. Look, sleep is broken at level one and getting access to it alongside teleportation is insane. And let's not forget you can hex people for extra crits and extra damage and have the best cantrip in the game. Eldritch Blast. Oh, and you're proficient in medium armor, and you could also carry a shield. This could get you an 18 AC at level one on a freaking spellcaster. Yeah, crazy. And now, a sketch brought to you by World Anvil. <laughs> yes. Yes! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm building a world! A better world! A world without Nickelback! <laughs> Are they gone? A nickelback gone? Uh let me check. Look at that photograph! Every time you make it! Why is world building so hard? You know man, you could try world anvil. Build a better world with World Anvil, the ultimate world building platform. It's got inbuilt interactive map making, tools for character creation and stat block management, and a timeline function to track the history and parallel timelines of your world. It's the creative game master's ultimate weapon, perfect for building, sharing, and keeping on top of your epic story. Check out World Anvil today and get an insane 40% off with code DD Shorts at checkout by following the link below. Three, Sky Sniper. 
It takes a lot to be a broken level 1 character without a free feat, but a flying race just about does it. Then you add on plus 2 to all attack rolls, sniping people from 100 feet away often an advantage, and things get a bit crazy. For this build, you're going to want to be an owl in for that fly speed. Then you're going to put that first level in fighter, put your highest stat as dexterity, get yourself a heavy crossbow, and some studded leather armor. This build really starts to sizzle when you grab the archery fighting style at level 1. Now, every ranged attack you make is rocking a plus 2 to hit, giving you a total of plus 7 to hit on every single attack. Then, remember you have 120 feet of dark vision, meaning if you're fighting in the dark, like at night or in a dungeon, you can snipe people down without them being able to see you, giving you advantage. Even enemies with dark vision usually only have it out to 60 feet, meaning you'll be gunning them down long before they see you coming. At night, it's almost impossible for you to miss, with a mathematical plus 12 to hit on every attack, factoring in advantage. Owlin also get proficiency in stealth, making it quite easy to get surprise rounds off on enemies. Plus, flight in D&D is just generally busted, letting you maintain aerial distance above your enemies, making their melee attacks useless. But that's not to say you're bad at close range fighting too. You can always pull out a rapier and go to town if you need to. This build works best as a knight assassin, deadshot type character who never misses. And at level 4, when you pick up the shark shooter feat, it gets insane. 4. The Cleric Club with snacks. Woo! This one is powerful in so many ways. First of all, we're going Variant Human, picking up Magic Initiate on the Druid spell list, giving us the spells Goodbury, Shape Water, and Shillelagh. Then you take your first level in Cleric, Life Domain, and put your highest stats in Wisdom. Boom! Instant Heavy Armor Proficiency. Now your DM might not let you start with Plate Mail, but even with Chain Mail, you're rocking an AC of 16 off the bat. And you have the Druid spell Shillelagh, meaning you can upgrade your club to deal 1d8 plus your wisdom for all attacks as a bonus action. This lasts for a minute with no concentration. Congratulations, you've joined Cleric Club. Leave no survivors. But the real broken part here is that you have the spell Goodberry. This lets you conjure 10 berries that last for 24 hours, and if someone eats one, they regain 1 hit points. But your Disciple of Life feature says that any spell you cast that restores hit points, restores that many hit points plus the spell's level, plus 2. This means that each good berry heals for 4 hit points, not 1. And this is totally legit, as confirmed in published Sage Advice. This means that you're walking around with 40 points of out of combat healing for the party that you can use every day at no resource cost. That's just plain silly how good that is. You can now heal friends, bash nerds, and do it all with a fantastic AC. This is a build that doesn't only have a broken combo built in, it's just great at everything, and stays great across the game. 5. The Naked Hex Monk Finally, we come to the Hex Monk, a build that once again abuses Custom Lineage and Fey Touched to give you 18 Wisdom, and this time, the spell Hex. Hex is a bonus action spell that curses an enemy to take 1d6 extra necrotic damage every time you hit them. Also, it gives them disadvantage on any ability checks made with the skill of your choice. Here's how it goes down. Turn 1, you bonus action Hex, and then hit the enemy with your quarter staff, dealing 2d6 plus 3, already on par with your average fighter. Then on all subsequent turns, you whack them with the quarter staff and then bonus action martial arts on arm strike for 1d6 plus 1d4 plus 6 plus 2d6. That's an average damage of 19. Honey, you just out damaged the pole dancing barbarian. And you can do this every turn. And don't forget, Fey Touched gives you Misty Step, so you have a free teleport on hand too. Plus, thanks to 18 Wisdom, your AC is 16 at level 1 with no armor. And it's only gonna get better as you level up and put more ASIs into Wisdom and Dexterity. Plus, your damage output screeches up next level when you unlock Flurry of Blows, dealing an extra 1d6 plus 1d4 plus 3. Hex, it's a monk's best friend. Check out the DM Secret Weapon magazine, released monthly with a ton of awesome maps, puzzles, monsters, adventures, magic items, custom subclasses, and more by following the link up here or the link down there. You can also join in on D&D games I run for the whole community there too. Remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and I'll see you next time.